attributes. For example, Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. We know that that is his name, the most merciful, and that the quality that we understand of Allah from his beautiful name is that perfect, sublime, absolute quality of mercy. Ar-Rahim, the bestower of mercy. And from that we understand that it is Allah who bestows His mercy to us. Al-Alim, the absolute knowledgeable, the omniscient. And from that we understand that His knowledge encompasses all things. As Al-Basir, pardon me, Al-Basir, the all-seeing, such that His vision encompasses all things, nothing can be hidden. Just like with his knowledge, nothing can in any way elude him. And so when we go through all of his names in this way to understand him, we have clarity with the Almighty in a way that people who have in some way represented God through pictures, through drawings, through paintings, through sculptures, that even though they've manifested their God, they still in no way have that clarity of who God is. But on the contrary, they've actually limited God. They've actually made God ungodly. When those who take God, who is not the creation, but rather He is the Creator, He is Al-Khaliq, and everyone and everything else besides Him is the created, then we come to realize that anyone or anything, aside from Him, if they are worshipped and believed in as God, then they can in no way be God because they are the created. And the Creator is no way the created. The carpenter is not the table that he makes. The designer, the engineer is not the car or the product, the widget that he produces. And so on and so forth. And rightly, rightly so with God Almighty, with Allah, He is not His creation. He is not a part of His creation. He is not within His creation, nor is anything of His creation a part of Him. And this here, is the greatest aspect that gives a person a hundred percent clarity. A hundred percent clarity. So if we were to look at the reality of what other religions believe, let's say for example in Christianity, where they claim and they state that they are monotheists, they believe in one God, but there's a clause. That one God is really a trinity, a triune God, something that is... How do you even say, three equaling one, one equaling three? It's a belief, it's a principle that you have to take on faith, but there's no way that logically or rationally one can believe it. And furthermore, when you look at the three components, you have God the Father, which for example would be with, with us for the most part, the God, the one God, the Creator. But then there's also God the Son or Jesus. All three parts, along with the Holy Spirit or Ghost, they're all the same. But if you really were to examine the life of Jesus, for example, as what you find in the four Gospels, you'll see that He was 100% human. He slept, He ate, He used the bathroom, He was hurt, He had a beginning, He had an end. And that beginning is clear. It was that he was born. It was when his mother, the virgin mother Mary, may Allah have mercy upon her, be pleased with her radiallahu anha, when she was born, when he was born, pardon me, when she gave birth to him. And so then you look at this. And you look at, for example, what you may find of other religions, of Hindus, where they worship, for example, what they have, God manifesting himself within the creation as an elephant, as this, as that, as whatever the case is. There's confusion in that. There's absolute confusion. In Islam, God never became a part of His creation, nor has a creation ever become a part of Him. God always was and will be the one God. Absolutely clear and distinct clarity that brings to the person, to the Muslim, a state of happiness, a state of calm and tranquility inside, because I no longer have to worry. Because the criteria is so clear. If it's anything that's physical, anything that's represented, anything that's a part of the created, a part of the creation, it can never in any way be God. And honestly, 
I will end it just with that. That this criteria in and of itself, and there's many others, there's many others that we haven't even touched upon with regards to the Qur'an itself, the message, the revelation. Also the messenger, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. But those are, if anything, secondary. And I don't mean a secondary in the sense that they're less important, but if we understand this first one, you'll come to see how after that everything else comes, uh, becomes clearer, that everything else after that becomes much more simplified. And then when you look at the message of the Qur'an, the revelation, and the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then you find that as a seeker of the truth, as a student of knowledge, your eyes become opened. The eyes of your heart, the eyes of your soul, the eyes of your mind. And so we hope that the question was clarified. We hope that the question not only shed light, but that it actually brought the answer that you were looking for, and that you all were looking for. And we thank you very much, and we'll be looking forward to seeing you again on the next session of the Deen Show. Till then, Assalamu Alaikum. Peace be with you.